Hi, my name is Ken Lasserson. This is a companion video for a post I just put up. And it's still with somebody with MACFS. So this particular case, because I know MACFS tends to have brain fog, I want to just go through everything bit by bit. Person did it with Biomsight, which is a UK-based firm, ships worldwide. And basically, once you hit the dashboard, you come in and now if you go down the side you will see external apps click that microbiome prescription and then you have the samples and whichever sample you want to send across click here and it will spin a little while and send the sample detail across automatically so you don't have to do any downloading or uploading live say sample you'll get an email in a few minutes with a link to do a login then you can switch over see there we successfully submitted and now we can go over there and we will have it there for example here is the example from the person who just did the um, upload so let's start going through things bit by bit so once you get on the site first thing you may want to do is raise the level because features appear or don't appear depending on the level you're at. And the reason is some people were oversaturated with too much. So I'm going to raise it to intermediate, but let's just, if you're following along, keep to the one items I selected. Um, there's a lot of information. Some of it's very professional in terms of technical details. Changing your microbiome. And first thing I do is go down to health analysis. And there we see how, based on this particular study, which is linked to here, so you can go off and read it, or your MD can read it, is you have two healthy bacteria and you have six unhealthy ones. Not surprised if you have MECFS. And then we have the potential medical conditions done. And actually, um, what I should explain a little bit, Percentile is, in terms of the bacteria identified from U.S. Library of Medicine studies, compared to other people, you have 97% of the same match. Or at least 90, if you take all the possible combinations in our 2,500 samples, you're sitting at a 97th percentile. In other words, three times that, there's about 60 people who have a tighter match than you do, but 97 people have don't have as good as match. The second number we look at is this number, which is how often is this report this condition reported to be in the general population, 78%, which means that basically you have a good chance of having this because 78% is 92 percentile would be inferiority conceptual breakpoint and you, you are halfway above that so it's a good chance. Other sec like here 14% and 87 86% will be the cutoff point so it's a bit iffy it's something you could start developing in the next while but at the moment it is iffy whether or not you actually have it. Insomnia um again 30% does it usually I take half of this number 15 so 85% would be the probable, and it's a chance of it, but not guaranteed, etc. So that's the first thing. Then we go down to a microbiome expert definition of what an ideal microbiome should look like. And we see here what is ideal and what is not ideal. Down the bottom, we get what percentile ranking. In other words, in terms of everybody who has uploaded to my site, you are roughly in the middle. Now, considering that most people who do microbiome are dealing with gut or other related issue, that sort of puts you with the rest of the pack. Not an extreme case, but at the same time, not what I would expect for a healthy individual, which I would expect to be sitting down about 20th percentile, sorry, higher at, at something like 80 or 90 percentile. So, this just sort of confirms what the person already knows. Further down, we have specific bacteria, percentile ranking, and we have some things which are 
pr pretty high, which are a bit of concern. You have something called hand-picked bacteria, which we'll come back to later. It's a more advanced way of doing it. It's when you actually go and you pick which bacteria you want to get suggestions for. Rather than having the system pick it, you can hand pick whichever one. So in that case, you would probably be picked these two, which are up high. The other ones are a little bit, eh, perhaps, perhaps not. Okay, so that gives you the basically breakdown of it. And now, that will give you a beginning feel. Now, what I'm going to do next is what I described in the study, which is I'm going to go in, and if it's all, I'm going to get rid of that, um, because I'm going to redo it. Okay, and that's where hand-picked bacteria shows up, and it will show up only if you've done it. You have to add it, and then that choice shows, that shows up. Okay, so we go in there, and now what we do is... We do suggestions using expert criteria. Here you should know different people think a healthy microbiome is different to the next person. In other words, conflict of opinion. Well, I do a simple thing. I simply say, okay, that's nice. Let's get everybody's opinion together and then we derive a consensus automatically on a system. So you get the safest, best suggestion using a whole variety of experts opinions as to what a healthy microbiome should be and what ranges you should have. This next section will go very fast because what I'm going to want to look at is a consensus, not individual results. If somebody you believe has the salvation on gospel and it's somebody on this list, then of course you would dwell on the suggestions with that particular person. But I'm going to go and rely on the consensus. So I'm going to first go in and pick Jason. Here, 15 criteria, get suggestions. Pairs of suggestions up here indicates there. Remember, he has 15 suggestions. 10 bacteria were out, so you got a fair number of items being identified and the nature of it. Most of them are, some are low, some are too low, some are too high. And then you have your suggestions down below there, probiotic suggestions, etc using just one particular person's criteria. We're now going to go back and now we're going to go to the standard lab ranges, which is what is the same methodology that most labs do. It doesn't really work well for the microbiome because it assumes everything is a nice bell curve. It's not. So hence the results from here can be a little bit odd but we'll do it anyways again it's just one way of doing it some mds will automatically go with this criteria because that's what they're being trained or aka conditioned to do click that and now we see we have seven and not that much of an overlap between them so we have seven there and some of the things on jason's are not here etc no, let's flip over and take a look at there. Let's take the first two. Um, and wait a minute, they are totally different. In other words, different bacteria were selected as being important. Okay. Different strokes for different folks. We now go over to box whisker. If you click here or click here, you will get information on how it's done. But for the moment, just say it's a never magical expert opinion way of doing it. And we get 61, in other words, box whisker find a whole bunch more. We recognize some there. Acromancia is on Jason. This is on the um, standard lab. So you get some consensus ha happening between them. Next is the count of multi abnormal range. Again, we go over and we get 98 bacteria. Oh boy, are we getting lots of bacteria being picked as items of interest okay now we go back and we do our last one and i'm going to just do five percent you can set whatever percentile you want so in other words i want to only identify bacteria where i have my numbers on the bottom five percent one 19 out of 20 people have more of it than i do or the top five percent which is where 
basically 19 out of 20 people have less than I do. So we're taking about extreme. So again, we select here and we get suggestions, we get 41. Okay, so that is your first run. You could go from this point of view and we can go in and take take a look. So we can go back and take a look at the consensus view. And what I'm going to just do is see how many suggestions came from each view consensus, each of suggestion. Uh, and that gives us all the numbers. And we're going to draw that in greater detail shortly. But what we're going to do is get the count. So you can see that based on the number of bacteria you picked, the number of compounds in the suggestion just as avoid or take varies greatly. So high as 431, low as 69. Again, the criteria you pick or the bacteria that you end up picking determines what suggestion because some stuff we don't have any information from. So only where we have information and you pick the right bacteria do we get a suggestion coming out of it. Okay, so that's basically it. Now let's go back and we are going to jack it up back to intermediate and go over into advanced suggestions. Advanced suggestion gives you everything. You can here you have the ability to go and toss in or remove certain types of items that you wish to take or do not wish to take or you're just curious about. In this case, I'm going to do everything in the thing. So what I'm going to do is go down here and what we're going to do uh, and I'm going to set explicit percentile. I'm going to set it at 15 percentile. Again, somewhat arbitrary. You want to have enough bacteria selected but you don't want to have too many bacteria selected. So it's a bit of a trial and error balancing cat. Why don't we have too many? Because you're getting more suggestions and more risk of contradictions on suggestions, which ends up causing more confusion. And now I'm going to go in and I'm going to go down to chronic fatigue syndrome here and click here. And we get proteins. So there's 13 bacteria associated with chronic fatigue syndrome. And we have suggestion. Now, you notice that it opens up in a new window. And that was designed so that you can easily switch back and forth. And just do it. So I'm going to try acne now. And for acne, we have come through. And we, have, we only have three bacteria that matches acne. And I'll go in and we have celiac disease. And again, we get 14 bacteria. And we also have Crohn's disease, which is on the list. Ah, uh, there it is. Do the same thing. And we have 24 bacteria matching. And by matching, I should refrain, is the clinical studies found that people with Crohn's have too low amount of this amount, and you have too low of that amount. Uh, too low of this amount has been found in clinical study with people with Crohn's, and you have too low of this amount. So um, that as in the bottom 15%. So you are well below what typical people have. So it goes through and lists all of the items there where you are a match. So let's go back. And, and after I did the post, she came back and basically indicate she has uh, 
allergic reliance there so we put that in and we'll do that one and we have 11 of the bacteria associated with it and the last thing she mentioned she she indicated was high cholesterol it is there and we do this one more time in this case you only have two things that match high cholesterol uh, or the bacteria and tributala which is too low okay so we have gone through and done a whole bunch of different sets of suggestions using different criteria um, and now we can go back and see we have 11 consensus report um, and as you can see here's the number and if you take a look here whoa we have up 1700 different suggestions from some of the criteria going through 1700 is an impressive number it's also a massive nightmare to sort through if you take a look at everything there you have uh, probably crawl 14,000 suggestions not what your MD will be willing to sort through or even you will be able to handle even if you or even if you did not have brain fog but that's okay we try making life easier for you and we'll already do this consensus a consensus is into six groups safest takes are ones where none of all the samples says suggestions we got says do not take Edwards absolutely nobody says don't take some people say eh, perhaps a little here or there but in general no problem safer means that okay occasionally one or two may say be careful safe probably safe means it's a bit of a balancing act as you'll see in a moment then we have definitely avoids in which case hey almost everybody says don't take this then moderate avoids not a quite a strong or clear cut and then probable avoids okay let's go through them. so what we have is a list of numbers here and if you go to the balance you have 231 231 is still a big number so what i usually do is see double click that and we had remember 11 sets of suggestions 10 of them are all agree on the same substances and if you take a look down you see where we have generally good consensus so not only do you want this number to be high you ideally would like the ratio here to be good so for example here no nothing against it 4.58 in favor of it that's good 4.73 in good 8.4 in favor is good so what you now gives us a list of items to take notice remember we did include other things in it but here is the list and you can go through the list but main thing is take things at the top with the biggest value we could go and also take a look over here and see what happened Uncle Kyle shows up again um uh, Colossum Pretericum shows up again so regardless of how you do it we get similar items always on the top safer items have some take and some avoid again we have 10 and 1 so in other words most of the time yes go for it and other times here some of the items like barley if you go up here and type in barley here you'll find sitting there their barley old combination is what was tested in the clinical study and down below we have other clinical studies where only barley was used so we have 10 take three of all uh one avoid similar beta glucan which is common which is a major component of barley so it's not a surprise lauric acid which is um monolaurin is a common name it's in coconut oil etc um and then we have particular probiotic etc then we get down to likely safe here we notice that the ratio uh can not necessarily good generally the net benefit is more than a net avoid 
but sometimes when you have four against and three against is a bit questionable these are things which uh if you're taking them for other reasons you may want to keep taking them but if not eh, if you can eliminate them comfortably not a problem now we get the highest risk adverse here is where most people fall down they do not pay attention to things they should be avoiding you know almost like alcoholic oh you should be avoiding booze no i want something for my hangover they looking for the a fix rather than addressing causality in this case high risk items are there and now we want to go here actually we'll go here first and we have licorice being a major avoid low carbohydrate dry diet avoid ah marijuana sorry it's also avoid gluten-free diet is an interesting one up above we have barley being suggested not wheat barley and wheat glutens are different and some people would claim that barley is gluten-free i'm not going to go into that argument um but gluten-free diet here and barley of above to me in my opinion are consistent you really want barley and oats which have a different type of gluten if they have gluten um saccharin avoid food supplement saccharin uh high red meat lots of red meat no kefir oh joy that's a bit of an interesting one um rare meat high um red meat rare meat red meat almost the same high protein diet again same thing so we have those which are high risk so you may want to go through all those and figure out things to eliminate from your diet higher risk which indicates that some avoid some take just like up above in this case most of the time we end up with in this case with prescription drugs um some some adverse risk again these are uh sort of in the middle if there's a reason you're taking them as in it's been shown to help with a condition you have in clinical studies keep taking them if there's no reason for taking them consider re reducing them okay so that's basically gives you the list long list sort by priority i know your mind will be exhausted but take a look at what you are eating take a look again we have the ability to search easily for everyone or you can go and just click here to do filtering to particular type of things or um, antibiotics etc for example for antibiotics if you is uh, we do that in the setting so we see the one which has the greatest benefit there with a myosin showing up there is for somebody with chronic fatigue it's not a surprise because it's been found to help a significant percentage of people with chronic fatigue syndrome not all of them but a significant percentage this person is a potential candidate but let's hop over to some more features there's a second way of calculating a small set of suggestions and that is this we know which bacteria are involved fortunately we also know what genes and the dna of those bacteria from that information we can calculate out what enzymes are involved and we're talking about 2500 different enzymes and which in which compounds these substances produce or consume or do both so we end up with a pretty big model of what is happening not from lab measurement but by looking at the genes and what we have here is the ability to get suggested probiotics from that information and there we have it and this first one is colostrum pretericum which is on the other list and all these by the way are the names of the retail probiotics um, and if you click on any of them like for example let's do uh, this one you will see what the actual ingredients are in it so but 
Um, Mary Reason is number one choice here. It's also number one choice when we calculate it a totally different way. So in other words, two totally different approaches. Both are in agreement that this probiotic is something you should be taking, etc. Sometimes these are the name of probiotic at a retail level. Sometimes you find that they are effectively the same thing. For example, here we have plantarium. We have plantarium. In fact, almost everything here is one or another version of plantarium. So they're all equivalent. Again, by clicking through, you see what is in there. Then we have other types of um, probiotics there, etc. So that's one way of getting additional suggestion. The other way, the next way is a little bit more restricted in what it will suggest. And what it will do is it looks at what compounds are not being produced that much or which are being overconsumed, doesn't matter which one. The net calculations from using the genes is that you are going to be low on them. So we have a couple of things. We have magnesium, which is interesting because magnesium usually will help chronic fatigue people and you are way, way, way down there. Rock bottom. Definitely you need to be taking magnesium of some form. D. ribrose, the second lowest, is used by um, Tillman and other CFS MDs. Um, and they found positive results from it. In this case, we have a computer as being what, given your microbiome, you are going to be low of or deficient of, so you supplement. Then we have a beta lean and some more. You can go again, adjust that upwards to other ones to get more. And you get more things showing up. Um, Sustain. So um, these are available. All these have, are available somewhere in the world as a supplement. Not necessary in your jurisdiction. That's a whole kettle of whole number problem. But these are things which conceptually should improve yourself because you are going to provide the compound to your body which the microbiome is not producing that much of. Very simple logic. Again, all theoretical calculation. Um, my usual thing, don't implement anything without sitting down and discussing with the MD and hopefully explaining who, what, how, and why of that. And feel free to show the site. Uh, so that covers a couple of the key suggestions. Now, she also had an explicit request, which is... Um, she had a question about whether or not she chose lysoclean, <coughs> which is not a, a uh, unreasonable. Here we see impact of stuff, etc. Now, the catch is, <coughs> although it's described for probiotics, it covers everything in our database. So it, we put it in here. Here it is what's selected, so I want to unselect it, and there we have what we're looking for. I just click that to do an update, and we see a quick calculation of what the net benefit is on the microbiome. And what we see is two shows the negative benefit, two shows positive. Not ideal. So, first question is automatically for any prescription drug. Is give me a list of the drugs which would also do the, the same effect that you, the doctor, wants to do. Give me a list of them. And I will go and evaluate each one of them and we'll by consensus agree on what it is. In this case, the reason was for acne. So we'll go over and we'll do a very common acne drug, which is POXY. Dr. Cycling, I'll uncheck that. And there we have doxycycline. I'll click that. Do an update. Hey! Look at that! Every number is positive. In other words, doxycycline will have a better impact on your microbiome than lime cycling. But there's still one more, one of my favorites, which I've used often, which is minocycline. Uh, I 
can check that. And down below we have minor cycling. Update. And the numbers are even higher. In other words, now forget the doxycycline. Let's go to minor cycling. It will have even more or theoretically it will have more impact on the microbiome. So that basically covers the um, contents of it. There's a lot more on the website, a massive amount more. But this is for somebody with brain fog, chronic fatigue, just going through. Key thing is, now go sit down and negotiate with your MD on what drugs you're taking. Ask for a list of alternatives. If, if you have a tablet or internet access there, connect, load up your microbiome sample, type in and look at the numbers right in, a, in your doctor's office, showing the numbers on screen. Again, he may find it interesting. It's something he has not been, he or she has not probably ever considered or experienced. And it's there. And the intent is to not only treat the conditions he wants to prescribe something for, but to also improve the microbiome as a side effect, as a quote, off label thing. Simple concept. We have a reasonable amount of information to make these predictions. And with that, it is better than just going on a single dimension, a single vector of analysis of what you should be taking. Okay, I'll shut up and get this uploaded and have a good day.